In the age of disruptive technologies, one often encounters two similar acronyms that represent two distinct ideas. The DER and DRE conundrum is one such example. While DER is distributed energy resources, DRE stands for distributed renewable energy. DRE is renewable energy such as wind, solar, biomass, etc. but which is interconnected to the distribution network. The distribution network is typically the electricity network where consumers get their power from. DR, on the other hand, is a totally different ballgame. Distributed energy resources are small-scale power generation technologies that are located near the point of use and are typically integrated with the electric grid. DERS can be used to supplement or replace traditional centralized power generation sources, such as large power plants, and they offer many benefits, including increased energy independence, lower costs, and reduced greenhouse gas emissions. Few types of distributed energy resources, solar photovoltaic PV, wind turbines, batteries, fuel cells, combined heat and power CHP, microgrids, biomass. Question is distributed or decentralized? Before we get into the specifics of DR, let us focus on the D. There are two famous D words in the realm of energy distributed and decentralized. Decentralized is a term often used to refer to off-grid systems which are not interconnected to the main electricity grid. Network theory provides better insights into de decentralized and distributed networks. Decentralization is the elimination of a single central node of control and enabling control at multiple nodes. It is true that off-grid systems are often decentralized. However, decentralized does not imply that the system is off-grid. From the perspective of network theory, decentralized is actually a subset of distributed. The electrical distribution system is typically 69 kV or below in voltage is what is referred to as the distributed network. What exactly is distributed energy resource, DER is something which is definitely interconnected at the distribution network. The energy resource is what makes it complicated. A solar PV plant and a lead acid battery are both energy resources. Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory LBNL was one of the first organizations to talk about DR. In the series papers under Future of Electric Utility Regulation, LBNL introduced DER to encompass clean and renewable distributed energy systems, distributed storage, demand response, and energy efficiency. The California Public Utilities Code, the New York Public Service Commission and the Massachusetts Department of Public Utilities all understand DER in a similar way. Massachusetts takes it one step further and adds microgrids and energy management systems under the purview of DER. Remember that only clean and renewable generation constitute DER. That means microgrids with diesel generators cannot be counted as a distributed energy resource. It also implies that DRE is a subset of DER. Distributed energy resources are electricity supply sources that fulfill the first criterion and one of the second, third, or fourth criteria, interconnected to the electric grid, in an approved manner, at or below IEEE medium voltage 60, 69 kV. Generate electricity using any primary fuel source. Store energy and can supply electricity to the grid from that reservoir. Involve load changes undertaken by end-use retail customers specifically in response to price or other inducements or arrangements. As you have seen above DR has been defined mostly in the U.S. It is impossible to draw parallels between the regulatory process in U.S. and rest of the world. The traditional grid with its centralized generation, transmission and distribution is being turned upside down for a new grid with prosumers and distributed storage. The penetration of DER is increasing every day. DER can affect the operation of generation, transmission and distribution utilities. On the other hand, DER can also potentially avoid or defer the construction of new infrastructure. DERS also offers benefits to consumers as potential savings in energy and demand charges. Let's start with Canada. The independent energy system operator IESO understands DER as clean energy resources located within the distribution system. Thus Canadian definition allows solar panels, combined heat and power plants, electricity storage, small natural gas fuel generators, electric vehicles and controllable loads to constitute DER. Remember that controllable loads such as HVAC systems and electric water heaters are in fact DER. Australia on the other hand seems not very keen on the green and clean angle from a distance. 
Australian Renewable Energy Agency Arena states that DERS can include behind the meter renewable and non-renewable generation. However, the common examples cited for DERS emphasizes the clean aspect. Aspect. The European view of DER can be simplified as the trio of on-site customer generation E.G. solar photovoltaic systems, storage, and demand response resources. Europe has also association of labs working together to develop quality criteria for the connection and operation of distributed energy resources DER to grid. Impact of DER on grid, next point of discussion is the benefits and challenges from DER. One way to determine benefits from DER is to examine if it is valuable to the grid. DER is more valuable in a peak time and less valuable when there is surplus power. Simply put if DER helps the utility in the meeting its challenges it is beneficial to the grid. What are the benefits from DR? A few benefits from DER are listed below, deferral of distribution network upgrades, reduction in line losses, reduction of emissions, backup power during emergencies, demand charge reduction and energy arbitrage, voltage support and frequency support, spinning non-spinning reserves, black start support, is it only benefits it's a question. While defining DER is an important first step, understanding the characteristics of DER is the second step. DERS comprise a number of different technologies. The inherent characteristics of the different technologies must be considered when evaluating their potential impacts. A few DER technologies, like electric storage, are completely controllable. But solar and wind generation are variable in nature. DER also includes demand response where load is treated flexible. The potential impact of DERS has captured the electric industry's attention in recent years. There is a lot of emphasis on the topic of hosting capacity or integration capacity. Next thing to remember is that DER modeling is important from the perspective of both the distribution system and the bulk power system. DR, by virtue of being a resource in the distribution distribution system has a definite impact on distribution system. However, there is also much hue and cry about the potential impact of DER penetration on the bulk power system. In case you are wondering what this bulk power system is, it is the term used to describe the generation and the transmission system together. One of the key areas that is being researched is the potential impact of DR on the ability of the power system to do its basic function i.e. supply power without interruptions. Some of the potential impacts of DR on the reliability of the power system, as identified by experts is as follows, visibility lack of DR data and its implications for the operation, planning, and design of the bulk power system, coordination between resources connected to the bulk power system and DERS, the effect of DR daily generation profiles on system unit commitment and ramping needs, and the effect of distribution connected variable PV and wind output on day ahead load forecasts. Modeling DER as DER penetration increases, the interaction between the bulk and the distribution system changes. Hence it is imperative to model DER to study both the systems. The most common power system study is perhaps the load flow model. The load flow models with DER can help determine the impacts to bus voltages and changes in power flows across the bulk power system following a contingency, such as loss of a solar PV generation plant. Now the feeder with DER can be modeled in three ways as shown above. As a detailed model of the feeder which is a composite load generation model example an hourly load and solar generation model from actual measurements and insulation data. As the aggregated generation of the DER which is independent of the aggregated load at the feeder connection. Example the same load as a single load in the substation and aggregated the solar PV units as a single solar PV installation interconnected in the substation. As net demand load such that the generation from the DR is balanced by the load of customers. Example both load and solar PV installations were netted as one load located in the substation. A few more details on the modeling of DR is added for the three major bulk power system planning studies, steady state load flow studies. Load flow study determines the real and reactive power flows for network expansion planning or voltage stability studies. Steady state power flow calculations only require a standard generator model. Steady state short circuit studies short circuit calculations determine the short circuit power levels for equipment rating and voltage sag propagation analysis. Steady state short circuit studies require appropriate DER models that would adequately represent the short circuit contribution from DER. Power system dynamic studies relevant to DER is either a disturbance ride through analysis or a transient stability analysis. 
The former helps to determine the frequency and voltage stability after a fault considering the amount of DER power that may be tripped during the disturbance. Transient stability analysis on the other hand to determine transient stability during and following faults with consideration of fast reactive support from DER that may improve the transient response of the overall system. From a power system operations perspective the two most important value components will be reliability and resiliency. Reliability is the ability to offer continued services is defined in terms of adequacy enough generation to meet load and security ability to withstand disturbances. Resiliency is an augmentation of the concept of reliability and views the grid as something more than currents and voltages. During transactive energy, transactive energy is a future-oriented valuation methodology which is a technical architecture and an economic dispatch system at the same time. Transactive energy allows coordination of DER and enables them to be dispatched in response to price or other signals. Characteristics of distributed energy resources, decentralizers are typically located close to the point of use, which can help to reduce losses associated with transmission and distribution of power over long distances. Modularders are often modular in nature, which means that they can be easily scaled up or down to meet changing demand or supply conditions. Diversters can include a wide range of technologies and resources, including solar and wind power, energy storage, microgrids, fuel cells, and combined heat and power systems. Variable some types of DERS, such as solar and wind power, are variable in nature, which means that their output can fluctuate depending on weather and other conditions. Interactive DERS are often designed to interact with the power grid in a bi-directional manner, allowing them to both consume and produce power as needed. Intelligent DERS can incorporate advanced control and optimization technologies, such as demand response and energy management systems, which can help to improve their performance and efficiency. Distributed ownership DERS can be owned and operated by a range of stakeholders, including individuals, businesses, and communities, which can help to democratize the energy system and provide greater local control over energy resources. Benefits of distributed energy resources, improved reliability and resiliency, DERS can increase the reliability and resiliency of the power grid by providing local sources of power that can continue to operate during grid outages or disruptions. Reduced greenhouse gas emissions, DERS, particularly renewable energy sources such as solar and wind power, can help to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and mitigate the impacts of climate change. Lower energy costs, DERS can help to lower energy costs by providing local sources of power that reduce the need for transmission and distribution infrastructure and the associated costs. Increased energy efficiency, DERS, such as combined heat and power systems and energy storage, can help to increase energy efficiency by reducing waste and optimizing energy use. Improved power quality, DERS can help to improve power quality by providing local voltage support and frequency regulation which can help to reduce power outages and other disruptions. Enhanced grid flexibility, DERS can provide grid operators with increased flexibility and control over the power grid, allowing for more efficient and effective management of energy resources. Support for local economies, DERS can provide economic benefits to local communities by creating jobs, reducing energy costs, and increasing energy security. Applications of distributed energy resources, residential and commercial buildings, DERS such as rooftop solar panels, energy storage systems, and combined heat and power systems can be used to provide power and heat to homes and businesses. Industrial and institutional facilities, DERS can be used in industrial and institutional facilities to provide backup power, reduce energy costs, and improve reliability and resiliency. Microgrids, DERS can be used to create microgrids, which are small-scale power systems that can operate independently of the larger power grid. Microgrids can be used to provide power to remote or isolated communities, or to provide backup power during grid outages. Transportation, DERS can be used to power electric vehicles, including cars, buses, and trains, using renewable energy sources such as solar and wind power. Grid support, DERS can be used to provide grid support services, such as voltage regulation, frequency control, and demand response, which can help to improve the stability and efficiency of the power grid. Renewable energy integration, DERS can be used to integrate renewable energy sources, such as solar and wind power, into the power grid by providing storage and other grid support services. 
Distributed energy resources are decentralized in small-scale energy resources that can include a variety of technologies, such as solar and wind power, energy storage, microgrids, fuel cells, and combined heat and power systems. DERS offer a range of benefits, including improved energy efficiency, greater energy security and resilience, and reduced greenhouse gas emissions. However, their deployment can also face challenges related to technical, economic, and regulatory factors, which must be addressed in order to fully realize their potential. Overall, DERS have the potential to play a key role in the transition to a more sustainable and decentralized energy system that is focused on efficiency, flexibility, and resilience.